Yes, hello once again. Welcome back to your uh, number one and favourite uh, classic dirt bike TV channel as we continue to uh, make our way through our uh, hours of uh, footage from the 2024 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the first uh, previous uh, three episodes that we've uh, posted. We still have uh, plenty uh, machines for you to take a look at so uh, we're going to crack on and uh, get straight into our latest uh, posting which of course uh, will be episode uh, number four. Right okay so first up here in uh, this episode four from the Telford show it's this big uh, four stroke uh, B50 engine that's sitting inside what looks like to me uh, an old uh, BSA frame because uh, I don't think this is actually uh, a proper uh, CCM classic because uh, it does have uh, what looks like uh, a 1974 alloy uh, CCM fuel tank as well but uh, it certainly has a look of a kind of bike that's uh, been made up of uh, bits and pieces and uh, there was certainly no information with this bike on the day that I grabbed these uh, little clips so uh, it certainly appears to have uh, the big uh, B50 CCM motor there uh, to power it. Now this uh, engine here is uh, of course painted black as you can see but uh, of course the stock uh, CCM engines back in the day were more or less all uh, unpainted in that uh, 1970s uh, period but it's still quite a nice uh, looking old twin shot racer uh, nonetheless and it's uh, probably been uh, put together by uh, using just a selection of various uh, different spare parts but uh, I'm quite confident that it's nothing uh, to do uh, with the uh, late Alan Clues classics from uh, back in the day although it still has uh, that uh, quite rare uh, CCM BSA uh, B50 engine which uh, I'm sure uh, your loyal uh, CCM bike builders would just love uh, to get their hands on uh, this engine because uh, these Clues motors are uh, becoming quite uh, scarce to find uh, these days. But then again that's what makes uh, the Telford show exactly what it is each year. There's uh, always something uh, different there to take a look at and uh, this classic uh, Ford banger is another fine example of what was on display uh, this year. And actually, uh, on that subject of original uh, CCMs, this uh, 1978 uh, Clues Classic uh, was uh, yet another beauty that was uh, tightly packed in among uh, the many other rare classics in the main hall. And this uh, area here is usually uh, where all the rare and exotic uh, machines are usually uh, tucked away. But I certainly wouldn't be surprised if this is another uh, one of those Rob Hughes uh, machines because uh, Rob uh, has one of the best collections of original uh, CCMs, possibly uh, even in Europe. And he's, he's got one and uh, often two examples of each and every uh, CCM that Alan Clues ever built uh, from uh, Clues' first bike in 1973 right up until uh, the very last uh, CCM bike of uh, 2011 when at that time they used uh, the Yamaha YZF 400 four-stroke engine in their uh, CCM uh, frame. But this 1978-500 is uh, a superb uh, piece of kit with uh, all of the proper parts on it including uh, the original uh, Castrol uh, number plate there who uh, were one of CCM's sponsors at that uh, particular time. But a proper old school uh, scrambler from the heady days of the 1970s, a true classic, the 1978 500 uh, CCM. So this uh, was another uh, quite nice looking bike sitting uh, on Andy Elliott's uh, HVA factory Husqvarna stand and uh, this uh, was another one of the many bikes that were being offered up for sale over the course of the two days uh, of the show although there was uh, no price at all on this bike so I don't actually know what Andy was uh, asking for it but it's uh, a big 430 
CR Husky, not uh, original uh, naturally, and uh, maybe it could be a 1981 or even an 82 model, but uh, it wasn't that easy to get uh, some shots of this bike because of the uh, many crowds that were mulling uh, around the bike. But uh, if it's come from Andy's HVA factory outlet, then it'll probably be uh, right and uh, would certainly make a good weekend twin shot racer uh, for somebody. Although certainly uh, for their time, these uh, 430 Husqvarna engines uh, were pretty good uh, motors and uh, quite similar uh, to the big 500 that uh, I used to have in my uh, 83 Husqvarna uh, back in the day, but uh, these definitely make uh, a fantastic uh, twin shock racer because uh, they are fast and uh, quite uh, reliable as well. And uh, through outlets uh, like HVA factory, uh, spare parts are normally uh, still available if you need them. And uh, if you can't source uh, brand new original uh, old stock parts, then there's usually uh, somebody out there that's making a uh, pattern or uh, replacement components to fit onto your old uh, husky. But uh, still quite an unusual colour scheme on this uh, 430 with uh, the yellow plastics and that uh, black uh, fuel tank, but uh, still a very nice bike uh, regardless. And uh, it would have been uh, quite interesting to find out what sort of price uh, this bike was being sold for because uh, these twin shock husfarners uh, do sell for quite good money and uh, they're very popular choices uh, with the twin shock and uh, classic racers but uh, I suppose if you were interested and uh, wanted to actually find out the price of this bike then it's probably best just to drop Andy uh, a message at HVA factory and he'll then uh, furnish you with all the details you need to know about this uh, black beauty. Although if you were looking for a bargain at the show, I think the Sunday was probably the best day uh, to make a deal because uh, I did see some bikes for sale on the Saturday with quite hefty price tags and uh, the ones that didn't sell on the Saturday certainly had their prices dropped uh, substantially uh, by uh, the Sunday. But uh, nevertheless, uh, this is still another uh, lovely twin shot racer from Andy Elliott at HVA uh, Factory. Okay, so our next uh, club stand uh, visit is to the 125 Twin Shock Air-Cooled Cup display where uh, these guys uh, have their own uh, championship for these smaller air-cooled uh, Twin Shock machines. And first up, it's a quite nice uh, looking CR uh, 125 Honda, which is uh, one of the more popular bikes in this uh, racing series, mainly because uh, there's usually uh, plenty of them around, so it's quite easy uh, to lay your hands on uh, one of these bikes if you want to get into racing in this uh, 125 Championship. Now, as far as I know, the 125 Air Cooled Cup has a nine-round championship this year, with uh, most of their racing events being held in the south of the UK. So if you're maybe into your two-stroke 125 uh, Screamers, then it might be worthwhile uh, taking in uh, one or two of their events and, and you can get more details of uh, dates and locations if you just uh, take a look at their uh, Facebook page. But these were another uh, pair of uh, cracking uh, looking bikes on the club's display. Uh, two very nice looking uh, YZ125 uh, Yamahas but uh, from which year I'm not exactly uh, sure, but again, immaculately uh, turned out and uh, quite typical uh, of the kind of air-cooled uh, 125s that you can see racing if you uh, pop along uh, to one of uh, their race events. But I'm assuming that uh, this particular pair of bikes here are uh, Mike James's uh, race machines going by the name that's uh, printed on the number plate uh, graphics and uh, as I remember uh, these old uh, YZ125s were certainly very quick bikes in their day and they did have uh, a superb uh, chassis that you could chuck around the track relatively easily and uh, of course that two-stroke 
uh, YZ engine as well uh, would uh, rev to the moon and back, as uh, I recall. But uh, as I said, you can see that Mike has uh, two of these YZs here on display, both in fantastic uh, condition for a pair of machines that uh, have not long finished uh, a full racing uh, season. And uh, it certainly looks like Mike's been very busy throughout the winter uh, getting both of these uh, machines uh, ready again uh, for another year of uh, hard work uh, on the track. Although if you are out and about uh, throughout uh, the summer this year and you maybe fancy taking in uh, one or two of the Twin Shock air-cooled uh, 125 race events, then uh, certainly make a point of going along because uh, this is a, a very healthy championship and uh, there never seems to be a shortage of uh, bikes uh, to go to the start line, which uh, certainly makes for a great spectacle uh, when you can get uh, 20 or so of these 125s uh, going full pelt around uh, the track. Now this was another tasty looking uh, trials bike that uh, I came across on my travels, a nice Italian uh, Motogori MT325 uh, by uh, JP Customs uh, Components, uh, another rare Italian stallion that you hardly ever see these days, but uh, again another uh, nice piece of kit here uh, decked out in the Moto Gori uh, green uh, livery. Now, of course, as I've mentioned before, trials bikes aren't really uh, my personal bag and uh, I'm certainly not up to speed with all that goes on in the trials world, but uh, I'm pretty sure that this uh, Moto Gori uh, trials bike had uh, something to do with the other Italian bike manufacturer, uh, SWM or Speedy uh, Working Motors as they were sometimes uh, called uh, because you can see that it certainly shares uh, some SWM parts like uh, the front and rear hubs and uh, that rear uh, swing arm uh, as well. And uh, as with the uh, Moto Gori and SWM scramblers and enduro bikes of their day, uh, these uh, Goris uh, use that bulletproof uh, Rotax uh, two-stroke motor uh, with that uh, rotary disc valve uh, induction uh, system. But this stainless steel exhaust system here is almost certainly uh, custom made, maybe even uh, by JP Custom uh, Components themselves. But uh, again, it's a quality uh, piece of engineering, as you can see, all neatly uh, tucked in nice and tight to the frame uh, to keep the bike's uh, profile as narrow uh, as possible. And uh, with regards to the actual year of manufacture of this Motogori trials machine, I'm pretty sure that this will be around uh, possibly the early 1980s or maybe even uh, a 1981 bike. And uh, once more, it was another uh, one of those bikes that uh, wasn't that easy to get uh, some decent shots of uh, on the day because of the crowds that were walking uh, around the halls. But uh, I still managed to get some uh, still pictures in between the gaps of the Telford punters. But for me, personally speaking, I think this is the very first uh, Motogori trials bike that I've uh, come across because I have seen uh, plenty uh, Motogori scramblers and a few enduro bikes in the past on uh, my travels, but uh, I have to say this is the first Italian uh, Motogori trials bike that uh, I've actually uh, seen and what a cracking uh, looking bike it is as well and I can only imagine that it's uh, quite a nice bike to ride uh, as well. Okay, so the next uh, featured bike uh, is uh, Terry Pickering's 1974 uh, 250MX uh, Yamaha which uh, Terry has very kindly uh, loaned uh, to the Hagen Shocks guys to display uh, on their stand, uh, who of course uh, we also have to give a little mention to here because uh, Hagen uh, are again uh, a major sponsor of this year's uh, classic uh, dirt bike show and uh, sponsors uh, of previous years of this show as well. But uh, if you're in the market uh, for shocks for your old 
classic uh, road uh, motocrosser trials or even speedway bike then uh, these uh, Hagen guys are definitely uh, the ones to talk to if you need your rear suspension uh, sorted out. Anyhow, uh, back to our featured MX250 uh, Yamaha and uh, as I said this nice uh, twin shocker here is another uh, fine uh, machine from Terry's uh, vast collection of rare classic dirt bikes and uh, this is uh, one of two Yamahas that Terry's been uh, busy restoring uh, during the last uh, year or so. But certainly for the time these were uh, pretty awesome uh, race bikes and uh, they certainly had to be because uh, this was the year that Honda had uh, just uh, launched the mighty CR250 Elsinore in this year so uh, our little Yamaha here was up against some big competition if it was going to compete with the other uh, three Japanese giants of uh, Suzuki, Kawasaki and of course uh, Honda. Now these MX250's engines were uh, a reed valve induction at five speed uh, two stroke that had uh, CDI electronic ignition and of course a Japanese uh, Makuni carburetor to feed it uh, with its fuel. But again, there was no need to pre-mix uh, the fuel with the oil as uh, these 250s had the uh, auto lube uh, system where by a little uh, oil pump here on this right hand side of the casing drew oil uh, from a separate uh, oil tank usually housed behind one of the bike's uh, side panels and it then pumped oil to all of the important parts uh, of the engine. But certainly, uh, no question, these MX uh, 250s, uh, even its bigger brother, the 360, were very uh, quick machines in their day and ultra uh, reliable uh, as well, as long as, of course, they were uh, looked after and maintained uh, correctly. But uh, they say that these MX uh, 250 two strokers were uh, about as close as you could get to the uh, Yamaha works bikes uh, of their day. Now, in the bike's uh, front suspension department, these uh, forks were uh, about as good as you could uh, muster uh, for the mid-1970s. Uh, they never really had much in the way of uh, tuning or uh, being able to make adjustments uh, to the forks, but uh, this was about uh, 40 years ago, so uh, these were uh, certainly the motocross suspension technologies uh, of its time. Now the brakes again were still old school shoe and drum type affairs, uh, maybe not as powerful as your modern day hydraulic brakes, but uh, these uh, still managed to slow or even stop the bike if you uh, pulled hard enough on that uh, brake lever. And as we continue along uh, the back of the bike, the original uh, 1974 Yamaha shocks that were bolted onto this bike in that year uh, would have been uh, just quite basic dampers and uh, as you can see Terry's now swapped these uh, for a pair of these much better Hagen classic shocks which will uh, certainly perform better and have a bit more in the way of being able to make minor adjustments to the rebound and the damping uh, here uh, on the rear. But this is certainly another a fine looking motorcycle to add uh, to Terry's already impressive uh, collection of old dirt bikes and he's certainly made uh, a good uh, job of getting this uh, vintage racer uh, back to prime condition uh, once again. Of course it's not all 100% uh, uh, original from 74 because uh, I don't think uh, that this uh, front number plate is absolutely uh, correct but uh, then again, it might uh, not be that easy to still get uh, new old stock parts for these uh, older MX uh, Yamahas, but uh, it's still all been done to a very good standard, uh, uh, of course, as are all of the bikes in uh, Terry's collection. But without doubt, another uh, very rare item, and uh, you just don't see these old MX 250s or even uh, the 360s out there on the tracks now in these uh, modern times so uh, there can't be uh, too many of these 
250s still on the go and thankfully Derry's managed to save yet another one from what maybe even could have been just a parts donor bike but if you're a regular viewer to my CDB TV channel then you'll already have seen quite a few examples of Terry's uh, classics from uh, time to time and uh, this is the latest addition to what is uh, already, uh, as I said, a com comprehensive and extremely rare collection of motorcycles in Terry's Aladdin's Cave of uh, vintage racers. Although this was another interesting display of uh, bike and rider and apparently this is uh, Team Wrinkly uh, Fred uh, Clutterbuck <laughs> and try saying that after you've had a few beers in you now <laughs> it looked like uh, Fred uh, the motorcycle mannequin uh, was sitting uh, on what looked like an old uh, cotton uh, 250 uh, motorcycle but what the actual uh, connection was between uh, the name uh, bike uh, and the rider uh, I don't actually uh, have a clue but it was an interesting uh, display with Fred all uh, decked out here in his uh, motorcycle gear although uh, by uh, looking at the, ex the expression on that face it doesn't look like he's too impressed with what's uh, going on uh, around him at the show but uh, it was certainly something different and uh, the only bike that had a rider uh, permanently uh, sitting uh, astride on it and it certainly made for some good photos and comments uh, from the show spectators as they ambled uh, past. So there you go, that's uh, Fred uh, Clatterbuck. Okay, so uh, next up, uh, this uh, was another fine uh, British bike that I spied at the show and this was uh, yet another uh, classic Rickman Matisse Matchless, uh, not too different uh, from the other uh, red bike that we saw in a previous episode uh, from the show but uh, this one uh, decked out in this uh, grey uh, type uh, of livery and uh, as I've said it before that's uh, the beauty of these Rickman frame kits because uh, you can buy a custom uh, frame to suit whichever engine uh, you require whether it's a, a two-stroke or uh, maybe even a four-stroke uh, Rickman uh, can certainly supply uh, the chassis already just to drop uh, your motor uh, into and of course uh, you can also have your uh, body panels uh, of the tank and the side panels the mud guards and that rear uh, tail cone in whichever color that takes your fancy so uh, if you want to build a, a british custom special in your own uh, color scheme then uh, usually uh, rickman can make up a frame kit to complete uh, the job so again, in our particular uh, Rickman uh, frame here, it's a big single cylinder 500 uh, four stroke uh, matchless uh, motor, maybe uh, one of those uh, G85 uh, CS engines, uh, which as I remember uh, stood for a uh, competition uh, scrambler, but uh, certainly don't quote me on that figure because uh, these big matchless uh, models aren't really something that uh, I'm too familiar with but I've certainly seen uh, other examples of these 500s in uh, other motorcycle frames uh, in the past. Now again I'm pretty sure that it was a dry clutch on these big four-stroke uh, singles and uh, the gearbox uh, also uh, was uh, probably a Norton AMC uh, pre-unit uh, type of transmission which uh, was a, a popular addition to many big British uh, classics of their day although uh, these uh, transmissions and this one here in particular uh, does have a matchless uh, cap on the side of the gearbox which was uh, quite a common practice depending on uh, which kind of engine uh, the gearbox uh, was bolted onto. And as we move on to the front end uh, of our Rickman matchless we have uh, what looks like that these could be uh, Italian Seriani forks or maybe even uh, a pair of those uh, metal uh, profile uh, forks because it's uh, quite hard uh, to tell but uh, the original matchless 
uh, scramblers with the uh, original matchless frames uh, back in the day, I think, uh, did use forks uh, from uh, Norton, uh, as I remember. But this uh, front hub is uh, certainly unmistakably a matchless part, and uh, in fact these matchless hubs uh, were used on many of the old uh, British classic bikes from the 1960s because it was uh, relatively light being made of alloy and the actual brake itself uh, was uh, very good for an old school uh, drum uh, stopper. Now this Rickman bodywork kit is, uh, as far as I know, still uh, being manufactured in uh, fiberglass just as the original frame kits were uh, back in the 1960s and normally uh, this uh, fuel tank here uh, would also have been made of uh, fiberglass but it appears that our owner here has opted uh, for the much uh, better and more user-friendly alloy uh, replacement which uh, although slightly heavier than the fiberglass item it doesn't uh, incur the same uh, kind of problems with modern day fuels that the older uh, fiberglass tanks did if you leave uh, fuel stored in them for long uh, periods of time. And uh, up here at the front uh, of our Rickman Matchless, it appears uh, to still have all of the correct controls uh, for that era with these uh, period uh, grips and of course uh, the ball end levers which uh, were very common on these old classics uh, back in their day. But the great uh, Don and Derek Rickman, who uh, were uh, certainly successful riders in their own right uh, during the 1950s, and uh, they later went on uh, to design and build uh, these uh, Rickman uh, chassis, uh, beginning with, of course, uh, their original uh, Mark I that they built in 1959. But they also went on to build various other chassis, uh, not only for off-road bikes, but uh, for many uh, road going and uh, road racing uh, machines as well. And it's uh, quite amazing when you think that uh, Rickman frames are still being manufactured even uh, to this very day. So there you have it, another nice uh, British uh, classic, a lovely uh, Rickman uh, matchless and uh, another great machine to finish off uh, this episode four from the 2024 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. So there you have it, that's uh, the latest uh, collection of old uh, classics from this year's 2024 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. As I said, we've still uh, got quite uh, a bit of footage uh, to get through. We maybe have uh, at least uh, another uh, two episodes before uh, we finish uh, the series so there's plenty uh, bikes to take a look at and uh, if you've not already signed up and subscribed uh, to my CDB TV channel then uh, do try and make a point of doing that because that way you won't miss out on any future videos uh, that I uh, post on my channel. But for the time being, thanks once again for taking the time to watch my video content and until the next time, it's goodbye for now.